Hey everybody, what you are about to hear is a Patreon exclusive episode. It is one of our call-in shows or possibly one of our custom episodes. Yeah, I pre-record these things, deal with it. Uh, it's one or the other and, and these will be heard a week earlier if you sign up to our Patreon at patreon.com slash the B plus. Uh, there's all sorts of rewards. You get to tell us what to talk about in these custom episodes, for example, or if this is a call-in show, you could be on it. Just by going to our Patreon, patreon.com slash the B plus, uh, supporting us for as low as a dollar. Every dollar helps. It's going to help us build the site, grow the site, get more content creators, get more people exposing Aussie wrestling to the rest of the world. It's the best place to get in on our mission of watch global, support local. We thank everyone, of course, who listens, shares, likes, subscribes, all of that good stuff for their support. And extra special thanks to our Patreon backers. Uh, enjoy the show. Wrestling Podcast. Podcast. Watch. Watch Global. Global. Support local. Local. It's the B Plus Wrestling Podcast. Podcast. You might not be an A, but you are a B. Plus. Wrestling Podcast. All right, ladies, gents, and non-binary friends, welcome to another B-plus podcast. It's a, whatever day it is that you're listening to this, you know what that means. When I don't know the day, it's a bonus episode, so it's uh, we're doing the call-in show today. So joining me, as she does for these call-in shows, she's here for the banter. Danders, how are you? Dan- Danda banter banter um, field, is that a thing? I don't know. Ban- banter field, banter field. Come right. on, camp up, mate. Yeah. Dan- I'm the banter banterweight field. champion. I'm yeah. the banterweight champion. Yeah. I had that on my uh, on my Tinder profile at one stage, and I deleted it because I was like, "That's a lie." Episode one: the banter men- menace. <laughs> Jar Jar Bants. All right, I'm done. I'm done. You're done. I'm well, my friend. How are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Wait, you're well. You're not living large. I'm like, I spent a whole day watching like dumb shit on YouTube, and I'm currently eating like two minute noodles. So I'm living at a moderate level at the moment. Right. You're. You're. Uh... You exist. Mm-hmm. You exist at this particular point in time. Uh, <laughs> exactly. It's been and hectic for you, right? Because you've got like hockey and stuff going on now too in, in addition to all our wrestling stuff, right? It's hockey season for you. Hockey season and footy season. I'm a big AFL fan. So between that, I'm like triple booked on some days. But Monday to Friday, I have fuck all. So <laughs> I'm trying to get my life together. Right. Um, but, yeah, it's a, it's a busy time of year. It's These three months are just the perfect storm. Yeah. You know, and so with, with these two, with hockey and um, footy coming in, MCW have decided to host uh, six shows in four weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, pretty, guys. pretty crazy stuff happening in Melbourne. I don't know, what are they May Madness? Is that is that a thing that we can call it? It is now. It's May Madness. Uh, but uh, let's let's get to some of our callers. We've got a first time. Caller, I'm going to assume long time listener Ben. How you doing, man? Good, thanks. How are you guys? Yeah, good, man. Good, good. I'm I'm tired, but that's just a standard state of affairs, really. Yeah, I've I've made my long awaited debut on the the, the B plus um, Patreon, so happy to be here. Yeah, yeah. That's, thanks, it's good thanks to so have much you... for joining us, man. These are my favorite shows. The call in shows are my favorite shows to do because it's just shit talking, which I am a professional at. Yeah, we go okay. in completely blind. Like we have no idea what anyone wants to talk about, and uh, sometimes it can be explosive. Yeah, I haven't heard the the One format time. before, also, so I wasn't if... sure what was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. If if I just go quiet, it just means that I don't have any idea about the people that you're talking about. So I'm yes. just being respectful. It's it's pretty common. I don't I don't know a whole lot of people. Yeah, this happens if we go outside the Australia or WWE bubbles. Danders just goes completely quiet, and sometimes I have to be like, "Hey, hey Danders, are you, are you still there?" Yeah, it's, I'm just googling the people you're talking about. <laughs> okay, bring up the New Japan roster for for my topics, then. All right, yeah. What what what, what do you want to talk about, man? Oh, well, first up, so we've got the New Japan uh, tour coming to Australia. Yes. And I was wondering what you guys think they'll do for it. Will it just be the same as last time, like a lot of crossover with Australian talent, or will they ch- treat it like a show yeah big boy and i were talking about this literally an hour ago when we were recording the king of sports cast 
And uh, I was saying for the price that the tickets are, uh, you you want it to be a proper full on New Japan show. Like I'm expecting Dominion level cards. <laughs> but, I mean, because you're talking ninety dollars for a standing ticket in Sydney. Yeah, all the Sydney ones are what about twenty five percent up for each section compared to the Melbourne one. Yeah, yeah, it's a, well, it, that it makes sense though because yeah, it makes sense though because UNSW Roundhouse is a smaller venue. So you can charge more for the tickets because you will assume the tickets are going to be in more demand because there's going to be a certain amount of people who want them and there's a smaller supply. So economics, that's what you tune into the podcast for. I don't I don't know too much about the New South Wales venue, but the Festival Hall last time did not come close to selling out. They were still selling tickets on the day at an elevated price, which makes no sense to me why you would sell at an elevated price when they have not sold out. Um, and so we actually, because we were in the not super cheap seats, but we were in like the mid midway seats, and we got brought up right up to. I think I was in about the fifth row because. Yes, yeah, so you came past us. <laughs> yeah, but, all these yeah, rows in so, front of us, and everyone comes running down from the back. It's like shit. Let's get get move forward. So we moved up about six or something rows as well. And got the higher tier yeah. seats for the cheaper price. Yeah, same thing happened in Adelaide yeah. as well. Same thing happened in Adelaide, but it was a basketball arena. And so we got moved down to the front of like the elevated area, but we weren't allowed down onto the floor, even though there were still floor seats that we could see. Um, but but we weren't allowed down there. But yeah, Adelaide went nowhere near selling mm. all it, the tickets either. It was the same. Like I was in the floor section, but I was in like the back seats of the floor section. So mm. I was in the silver, I think. And so we just went into the gold. Um, I heard from a couple of people that the Sydney crowd was much hotter and much more enjoyable. So I'm assuming that it came a lot closer to selling out. Yeah. And so they've gone, well, Sydney's our market. Let's pump the price up, which, you know, I mean, demand, you know, it is what it is. But uh, for for me, for that level of money, I would want to see a full-on new japan show like i want you to bring over the young lions uh and maybe give one of our guys a win over a young lion or something like that i i don't want it to be what it was last time which i loved what it was last time but last time i think i paid like 50 bucks to go uh whereas now like if if i was to go i'd be flying to melbourne or sydney and then paying 90 dollars for a ticket you know what i mean so it's like you want it to be really fucking good for that price i think we'll get kevin kelly and I suppose maybe he could be teaming up with Gino if they're going to do like a live New Japan World. Yeah, it will be live on New Japan World, I think. Uh, if not, like the other ones went up on New Japan World, but they weren't live. I would love to see Gino doing commentary for it. Um, the, it's, Gino's been great on on commentary for New Japan World this week. I admit I only watched the what night one of the three night stretch at Corican, and even that was only the last couple of matches. Just had some other stuff on. But was there any highlights there that need to check out? Uh, well, I mean, I've I've Last been two matches. Yeah, I've just been one. tuning in and out and watching highlights for the most part uh, because I I was just like I I drop into the stream as I'm doing other things because I'm like I want to hear how Gino is doing. <laughs> That's kind of been my reason to watch those couple nights of shows. And so nothing's really nothing really major has stood out, but uh, but it's it's been nice hearing hearing Gino's voice because we know what Gino can do on the mic. Yeah, definitely. I think he's far oh, better so off the mic than he is based in the in ring. Melbourne, then? I am. I am Melbourne based. Um, and just going, just going back. Um, I I didn't love the last show. To be com- completely honest, I thought that it was they were right in the middle of that really hot Bullet Club feud. Yeah. And there was nothing developed. There was there was like the match where. Um, it was Tamatonga and those guys came into the crowd. That was a bit of fun. That came right near us. But for the rest of it, it was just like, I was like, this is like a, an amped up World Series wrestling show. This is, I am glad I didn't pay for the crazy good seat that I'm sitting in. I'm glad that I paid for the crappy seat. I don't know. I'm such a fan of like local wrestling that I would much prefer to see local guys going up against the New Japan guys because that's something you're not going to see on New Japan. Sorry, on New Japan World. Yeah, I I had only ever been to one MCW show before the New Japan one, and that was the Okada show. 
And so I'm like, who the fuck are all these guys? <laughs> like, I'm here to see New Japan. <laughs> and then they even snuck on that. I, I don't know what the matchups were, but there was like a tag match. Just it was all Australian people, just a two versus two. It's like, oh, they didn't advertise this. Sneaking a bloody Australian wrestling match onto this card where, uh, off the top of your head, do you know what that one was? Not off the no. top of my head. No, okay. I don't recall. I but they did, like... they did similar here in Adelaide as well. But, mm. but it's it's okay, one of those things like I like seeing the uh, the Aussies go up against the internationals. Obviously, I like giving them that platform. But I just feel like for the price, like if if Tanahashi's not coming, get the fuck out. The, the, for me, you know, it, that's that's kind of where I'm at with it. Yeah. Especially because I'd have to travel, much like you would, Ben. Yeah, well, it's not so bad for me. It was a good friends to stay with in Melbourne. So, but we did go the ringside seats and uh, got second row. So nice. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Nice. This but, was uh, actually, and this is, sorry, can you still hear me? Yeah. Awesome. Um, one thing that this really opened my eyes because I don't, I'm not the type of person who likes to meet wrestlers because I am just an incredibly socially awkward person. Um, so this was like the last time they came out, it opened my eyes that on the indie scene and, you know, also in like other areas, the the concept of paying for photos my friends were telling me about it and it's obviously completely normal, but I'm like, if you're paying whatever, like $150 for a meet and greet to then have to pay $20 per person for a photo, that was very bizarre to me. I know it's a controversial point, um, but yeah, that was, that's what I remember most vividly about the last New Japan show. $150 for the meet and greet, but I would go the $20 photos with the guys that hang out after the show. Yeah. If, if they're, if they're hanging out at the merch desk, and asking for money for photos at the show, sure. But if you've already paid a meet and greet ticket, presumably some of that's gone to the wrestlers. You would expect a photo to be included in that. I don't mind paying oh, meet absolutely. and greet for that's WSW because it's a lot cheaper. Yeah. But sometimes yeah. you don't need yeah, it. Absolutely. It depends if there's like a Cody Rhodes there where there's a massive line where you need that extra time to get in early. But if there's no huge draw, then you like last time, I was like, oh, we don't even need the meet and greet. We get them all at intermission and after the show. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not a meet and greet person personally. Uh, I am. Haven't you looked at my Instagram? Yeah, no, I have. I have. <laughs> I've noticed you, you got the, your photos there with with all. Like you got the photo up with Naito and stuff, right? Um, but yeah, no, I haven't got Naito. No, you haven't got Naito. Who, who am I thinking of that has a photo with Naito? Then there's someone else. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah. So what else did you want to talk about, Ben? I was going to say how to pronounce Jushin Thunder Liga. Now, it's not Liga. Now, come on, guys. No. Okay. This is a thing. Mikey Mikey pronounces all sorts of things weird. I wish he was here so that because I feel bad talking about it. He pronounces all sorts of things weird, and sometimes it rubs off on me just because I hear him say it. It was infuriating. It's like oh, it's like grading down a you know a chalkboard or whatever. It's, it's just it's yeah. Just no, it's, so it's, it's it's Jushin Thunder Liga. I know this. But Except it, Raiga, because just the way the <laughs> Japanese alphabet is, there is no L in the Japanese lang- language or in the alphabet. Yeah. So I will, I'll accept a Raiga. But, um, <laughs> Not if you're a white person, because it just sounds racist as fuck if you say it and you're yeah. a white person. It's no, but like if you're when, learning when Japanese, Japanese, if you're learning Japanese, when... you have to you know, mimic their consonants and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> when I was at the New Japan show, MP, all the people in the crowd were like, Can me? I was like, Shut up, you racist fox! Just uh, shut up. When they try to you're sound so like the Japanese girls on the on the shows, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that frustrates like, me as you're well. You're fucking embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, but no, I am aware that it's Liger, and I I hear myself say it sometimes, and I get very upset with myself uh, because. So you should be. Yeah, I apologize for that, Ben. I do. Uh, I clearly... get upset with you too, Greg, even though I don't know who it is. <laughs> the last thing I wanted to bring up was um. Hiromu Takahashi, like, I just think he's so overrated. Like, people talk no. about him as if he's, like, the, the second coming. But, he, like, sure, he's good. He's Like, I've got nothing against him except for his, his boot or his pants with the, the tassels. Like, I, I can't stand wrestlers with, wrestlers with the tassels. Not a JXT, like the JXT fan, then? Of the world. No, uh, no J- I don't <laughs> mind JXT. But it's more like the Young Bucks, John Morrison... Yeah, John, John Morrison can fuck off, but everyone else, I, I like Tassels, man. I love Tassels. Nah, fuck, fuck the Ultimate Warrior. I fucking hate that guy. <laughs> I'm glad he's dead. Tassels, that's, a bit wrong. Wrong. that's fine. 
Wow. Just it's, when it's around, around the bottom of their, their pants, or, uh, like the boot area, I just I just don't like it. So, okay. But what's the deal with Hiromu? Why is there so much love for him? I, I think it's the, the charisma, you know? Like he drips charisma. Like he's just naturally, like the way he moves, like even though like he's speaking Japanese and you're reading subtitles on the promos and stuff, like everything, he's, he's just a captivating person. Got nothing to do with like the stuffed cat and all that. Is, is oh yeah, the no, D- Daryl is, is it Daryl? Daryl's the cat, right? Daryl's amazing. But uh, but that's not. I ever did was destroy it. <laughs> but that's that's not it. Uh, that's not the whole thing. I I think as well, like the jackets he wears, like he's he's got a snazzy style. I don't know. I'm I'm a fan. I like, and it's not even like he's good in the ring, sure. But it's not about that for me. It's about the the person, just how captivating he is to watch, the way he moves, the way he dresses, the way he carries himself. I'm definitely looking for him, looking forward to him returning from injury. Except just the way that people carry on about him, so I just I just don't get it. And hopefully, I do get it. Yeah. So. Do you think he comes back? Like, uh, do you think he comes back still a junior, or do you think he comes back, uh, you know, put a few pounds on and call him a heavyweight? Oh. I can only imagine him as a junior for the time being. Like, there's, they've got to move like Will Osprey up first, and you've got to get to probably show he's quite big, one of the bigger ones of the juniors before they, they do another one. Mm. Yeah, him lead the charge in in the juniors when once he's come back for a while. Yeah, I mean, I, a big part of me wants to see him come back, and I think that that's why they gave Dragon Lee the the junior heavy title as well, so that there's that natural feud there. Because you know, you broke my neck, uh, but. <laughs> But no, I, I just, I would love to see them shock the world and be like, oh, by the way, he's a heavyweight now. <laughs> he's got unfinished business with that junior heavyweight title, though. He does. He definitely now. does with, uh, with Mr. Belt. Yeah. Did you see that when, when he had to relinquish it, it and gonna... the belt talked? I think I saw a gif or something. I don't know. It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I think if you're going to do it, what you should have is have him come to the ring with like a scale, like hardcore Holly style, <laughs> Cut the ring with a scale, uh, Get Holly, it, yeah. put the scale in the ring, and then um, it was Crash and Hardcore. They were both five hundred pounds. Right. Okay. I thought it was just no. It was just Crash. Yeah. I'm sure it was. It was just Crash. It was it was it was when they were a tag. They were team. a tag team, yeah, and he'd carry the scale. Out. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. My apologies. That's Crash right. carried the scale. Yeah. They were both allegedly no four hundred pounds. They were both allegedly <laughs> over four hundred pounds. But yeah, comes in, puts the scale on, it reads two oh six, bang. <laughs> do the do the super heavy gimmick. That's yeah. how I would do it. As someone who doesn't watch New Japan, that's how I would do it. Valuable, valuable input there, Dan. This is what this is what we this is what you get paid the big bucks for on Patreon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, was there anything else you wanted to talk about, Ben? Uh, that's all I had to bring to the table. But uh, I wasn't really sure how this was going to operate. But uh, yeah, no, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Uh, you you want to give a plug because I know you do. You do some podcasts and things as well. I know you talk every, about this stuff does on the a regular podcast these days. Yeah, so. we all have podcasts, but put it out there, man. Let people find you. Okay, uh, I do the Strong Zero Hour podcast, so it's sort of the local wrestling scene and Japanese wrestling. Basically, that's all we talk about and some video games, whatever we've been watching. And that's generally once a week. And then I've also got the BAM cast. It's all on the one feed. That's the Badly Awesome Movies podcast. So, And you should be able to find me there somewhere. Awesome. Uh, Thanks for coming on, Ben, and we'll we'll talk to you next time, man. Thank you. All right. So now let's uh, let's bring in old mate, old mate Chapo. How you doing, Chapo? Not bad, champion yourself. Yeah, good mate, good. I'm I'm living large. Danders isn't, but I am. I fucking Danders heard you kids repeat. screaming, mate. Don't act like you're living large. No, you're you are living the, char- the the father of the screaming child life. Yeah, well, I mean, look, kids do that yeah. from Danders time to time. Danders has a reputation to maintain. Right? <laughs> kids do that you from time to time. Break. It's, that doesn't mean I'm not living large. Okay, I got a new PlayStation game this week, and I've spent an hour on it. I'm very proud of that. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, big balling. Mm. <laughs> it's that Patreon money coming in buying you video games and stuff, isn't it? <laughs> I wish. I wish, dude. It's that it's that stay at home dad Centrelink money <laughs> that's buying the video <laughs> games. You're on Scomo surfing team, huh? <laughs> 
I have I have various side hustles, uh, but you know it, it is what it is. <laughs> Cocaine saw. I mean, what? <laughs> what? What was that? Oh, okay. <sighs> yeah. So, yeah. What, do you want to? We want to talk about some wrestling stuff, or do you just want to hear about the hour I played of Days Gone? Not really. I'm not interested in it. <laughs> here to talk wrestling, my friend. Fair enough. I think that's what most people are, are going to be here for. What, what do you got for us? Um, I'm really loving the stuff that. Elliot Sexton, no, I'm not Alex Sexton, Jonah Rock's doing with Stokely Hathaway. Yeah. In NXT, I like the little videos they keep putting up on Instagram and stuff, and it, I just think it's a really, a really good combo. Yeah, Stokely Hathaway is fantastic. He's a great hype man. Yeah, and so having him paired with, with Jonah Rock, like, I don't think Jonah Rock needs a mouthpiece, to be honest with you. Like, Jonah Rock is charismatic as hell. But, uh, mm. like, he's just, he's very affable, right? Mm. But, yeah. Stokely's just a beast, but he's great with what he does. Just Stok- Stokely Hathaway, like, I don't care who you put it, like, you could put Stokely Hathaway with The Rock, you know, and, mm-hmm. and it would work. You know, <laughs> like, he's he's that good. So uh, He's I'm, a great talker. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of, of what they're doing, and I, I, I can't wait to see it make its way to TV. You've got to think I it'll make its way to TV sooner than later, right? I'm pretty sure one of them taped a, has a televised taped match. It's either him or or Vado has a taped match. They just taped it recently. Not too sure. I think right, it was see, I during. Don't, I the, don't look at the spoilers, so. so no, it's know, not yeah. during the. It was not a spoiler thing. I've seen like even one of them posted a thing on Instagram about having a, t- a match taped. Was that cool. the access thing? So I'm not too sure if they're for all those uh, matches yet or not. Right, right. Yeah, so it could yeah, be so for a When Worlds Collide, or it could be for an NXT TV taping, or it could be for an NXT UK taping. There's no way to yeah, know. Yeah, something. <laughs> yeah, so it'll just pop up when it pops up. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep an eye out. But but no, Stokely Hathaway is amazing. I'm I I I'm surprised he got signed because you know WWE don't do managers really, generally speaking. Mm-hmm. And and I wish it's it's something I wish they would do more of because I I personally enjoy managers uh you know i like tag team wrestling i like all the things about wrestling that vince mcmahon doesn't <laughs> brother <laughs> yeah yeah it, it's it's starting to change a bit it looks like the overall style at wwe i think h is having more of an influence on what's going on day to day now it definitely seems that way what do you guys reckon it definitely seems that way uh dan does your i don't know if you know this or not but you're muted she muted herself. Did she mute herself? I think so. I don't know. All right, I fixed it. I fixed it. I fixed it. Okay. Were you trying uh, okay. to talk was, and we kept talking over you? Yeah, I was. <laughs> and then I, like, the more you were like, Dan, as you're muted, I was like, well, unmute me, you fucking cunt. And then you're like, you couldn't hear me. Uh, <laughs> um, please, Dan, can you get an <laughs> Ibis tattoo? <sighs> um, no, give me infringement. Yeah. I'm more of a trash panda. That's my kind of thing. Like I'm a trash nice. panda or a raccoon. A um, couple of things I wanted to mention there whilst I was censored by myself um, <laughs> is that I believe Elliot Sexton's uh, show, his online show, his YouTube show Total Flogs is launching mm-hmm. next week if I saw something. So that'll be exciting. Yeah, yeah I'm and keen for that. the other thing, you want to ask some stuff about the MCW show. Yeah, I wanted to ask, did um, Steph Delander get any sort of reception when she um, came out and interfered in that match? I think there was like some – I was I was yelling quite loud because obviously I know who she was and I was really excited. But people love Avery, so I think that people were upset that Avery was getting screwed over. Ah, people were like, boo. Because Sorry. some of their booking – Sorry. No, you go. Because I was going to say, some of the booking with um, Indy and Steph has been really strange as of late. Like, they've gone against each other in some, like, when they've worked for some companies, but other companies are best of friends, so there's no, like, continuity between the storylines. There is some issues with continuity, but it looks like, I think I saw that she's coming to the next one to settle the score. I would have ah, thought okay. she would be a girl, but I don't think she's going to be mm. a girl. I think she's going to be at Settle the Score. The and they're going to be a tag score. team. The yes. war to settle the score. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Mikey no, J. Sounds like <laughs> such a WWE pay-per-view that does. 
<laughs> it sounds like a like a late nineties WCW one, I reckon. <laughs> oh, with a bunch of drunken um, college kids at it. I just like the yeah. move to longer wrestling show names and and more ironic wrestling show names. Like uh, you know, the Progress chapters are really good at this. Or like uh, over WrestleMania weekend, it was what was it? Orange Cassidy is doing something or something. Who knows? Right? Like I, I like that. I f- I feel like. The more wrestling shows we have that have, like, names of the shows sounding like Fall Out Boy song titles, the happier I am. Yeah. 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 I agree. I like short names. A little less... (laughs) MCW. A little less 16 candles. A little more touch me. I would go to that show. Yes. Right? Uh, Like, that's amazing. Like, more movie references and, and random shit. In, in show titles, because, like, there's just, there's only so many no limits that you can, you know what I mean? Right? Like, and P- PWAs are the worst. Sorry, Chapo, but PWAs are the worst. Like, the last one, the show was called Ugg versus Wahlberg. I was like, <laughs> no, that's a, that's no, a match. That's no, see, not a I show. like that it's because like, that's a big it's, fight. It's like field. UFC. Yeah. It's like UFC. I like that. It fit one. the gimmick. N- next one's called Once Upon a Time at Max Watts. See, I like that name. I like Once Upon a Time at Max Watts. That's that's fun to me. Uh, but no, that, I, that's I don't a bit think. Of fun. Yeah, I don't think I don't think PWA are the worst. Uh, like if you look at if you look at Adelaide, I think some of the the show. I mean, you know, you got Riot City Wrestling reanimated. You know, um, Wrestle Rampage Uprising. Uh, like it's it's just it feels generic. And like I love these companies. Don't get me wrong, Wrestle Rampage especially. I feel like Wrestle Rampage could totally get on board the the weird show names train and it would make sense because you've got you've got rat daddy in the promotion you've got corn dog bringing the sauce like wrestle rampage fans clearly like weird esoteric shit so give it like yeah. crazy names to your shows man I, we need more of that in australia yeah. Rest, wrestle rampage champagne for my real friends real pain for my sham friends look it doesn't have to be fallout boy song titles but i appreciate the effort MCW could Panic be at MC- the Disco would also work. Yeah. You can have the MCW instead of instead could... of like hardcore mania, right? You call it like uh cute without the E, right? <laughs> oh my god. Sorry, this is a total tangent, but I saw one of those memes was like felt cute, might feel cute without the E later. <laughs> yeah. It was the guy from Taking Back Sunday. The E Alrighty. Yeah. Uh, what were you gonna say? Sorry, Chapo? Um you could have like MCW five mission to Moscow. <laughs> What mission to Moscow? I don't, I don't get that. Um, one. It's a police academy movie one. Yeah, uh, you damn, that, you damn you know youngins. What? Yeah, see, I'm, I'm down that, for that. That would work for um, that would have worked for Wrestle Rock because they had Brigitte and whatever <laughs> muffins is. Um, see, the Wrestle Rock shows are yeah, awesome. His... They get they get good titles, right? May the yeah. fourth be with you. Yeah. Well, okay, that's kind of generic, I guess. What's with everyone running May 4th? What was the last one? Hmm? Well, the last one was something to do with the Cold War. I remember thinking it was fun. Mm. Isn't it because of that chick who got um, a stapler on the... Stapler to the vagine, yes. The vagine, yes. Brigitte. 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 Yeah. Brigitte, she's she's one tough motherfucker. Yes, and she she loves old mate Putin. (laughs) Did she have the photo? She had a photo of Putin, right? That she was carrying she around. And she she hit Michi over the head with it. Amazing. Amazing. She was stroking it like it it's a long night. lost husband. Yeah. The re- it was the, a loose night. <laughs> the, the Wrestle Rock shows. Oh man, I can't wait for this next one. And I like I only get to watch them on demand. Although I was at the obviously the Wrestle the the Super Showdown one with the catwalk match, which was still how it didn't win match of the year for 2018, I don't know. Five stars. Five stars. Seven in Japan. I give it I give it seven <laughs> seven bananas out of six. That's what I give it. But would the T shirt company book it? <laughs> I think they would, to be, be honest. Surprised. Yeah. I think it's, it's totally up there, Ali. Uh, of course it is. <laughs> Everything's up there, Ali. I don't know if you saw, but uh, Andy Coyne actually busted out the, the cat hat head. The same cat head for uh or Dowie busted out and made Andy Coyne wear it. Yeah, as his personal ring announcer. Dowie's a yeah. heel, right? No. How? He's a heel in um 
He's a heel in Wrestle Rock. I know, yeah, CK Dow is in, in heel Underworld. And, and in Underworld. But but how is how is like he's he's actually being introduced as Super Dowie, right? And he's winning like he's he's rocking a John Cena gimmick. It's literally John Cena. He's beating Ooh, Tommy Knight yeah. and T Rex. He's, he's for a, he's a wrestler for kids. We don't have uh, like over eighteen shows here. We have wrestling is for everyone. He's a wrestler for kids. That's why you see like hundreds of kids in his t shirts. Yeah. That's a weak effort. You need also less Greg. family you Greg less, in his less family friendly stuff, more adult stuff I say. Yeah. Well Yeah, you, you, you keep that in New South Wales with your two hundred and fifty people per show. Hey, 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 hey. Oh Max Watts no, is selling CWA. out. Okay. What are you okay. talking about? Yeah. Okay, yeah, Gandon. It's easy to, it's easy to sell out when you can fit 300 people in your venue. Danders, mate, mm-hmm. which wrestling promotion did the current and second ever women's tag team champions come from? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Not they MCW. wrestled everywhere, to be fair. Not I, MCW. I don't, I, where, what, about, um, what about former... Cruiserweight <laughs> champion and be- the world's best kept secret. Where did he come from? Huh? Oh, you mean the pre the pre show kickoff specialist? Uh, yes, that you- one. Don't you be fucking no, 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 That's <laughs> not that's not fair, man. That's not his fault. Like the, his, his stuff has has deserved to be on the main show for well over a year. Like like he's putting on the best matches. Like I don't care if it's on the fucking kickoff. He's doing the best work, so. And he made he made two hundred and five semi relevant again, not relevant enough for me to watch it, but relevant <laughs> enough that I know what's that I know what's going on there. Relevant enough for uh, me to pretend I watch it to look cool on the internet. It's all for the me. Who looks Dan cool saying I watch two hundred and five live? <laughs> Oh, dude, Danders is a meme now. We d- How did we not talk about this to start the show? Yeah, Danders. She, she ended up on Boulevard Bullies of all places. You're a meme. I, I have, I know. I, like, I keep looking, like, I keep getting notifications for it. I had to turn off notifications because it was, like, <laughs> so insane. Uh... Um, I think it's kind of, it's kind of stopped now, but I think I made about 1,650 likes and about 700 retweets. Yeah, Which wow. for someone who had 120 followers... But, uh, it was a fair effort. Yeah, um, but, but that's the thing that's, that's, that's amazed me from... is watching your followers not change. No, I I think I gained about thirty or something. How does it's one like, get I'm followers just... then? Like this, because you went vi- you literally went viral. But yeah, Dan doesn't follow people on Twitter. That's why. Did I unfollow you? I do you know why I unfollowed you, Chapo? It's because I, I didn't know how to mute AFL. people. And you would not shut up about it. Wasn't even like shit talking. I'll refollow you and I'll mute you. I've got Greg <laughs> muted too as well. Oh. Don't worry. Um, Wait, you have me muted yeah. on it's, Twitter? Yes, because because you live tweet non live shows. Yeah, that's what I do sometimes. <laughs> I haven't done it in a uh, while because I've just been tired. You know who's yeah, doing it now? Um, Mikey's doing that now. Yeah, he's probably muted too. I um because. I don't have a lot of people on Twitter. I think I only follow about 100 people. Um, so if you're tweeting a lot, I will see all of your tweets in a row. Ah. I will just see, my feed will just be your tweets. You, right. Chapo, were like something to do with NRL being shit. And you were like, but what about AFL? It's like, no one's talking about AFL. We're talking about how the NRL is. Ah. Like, no. I think, but you know what? I feel bad. I'm going to go back and refollow you and then we can just fight again. Okay, because that's fun. Mm. Okay, wait, hang on. So it's fun when you fight with Danders, but when because I fight with Danders, harmless. I'm sort of some abusive, freaky, weird guy. Because, yeah. Gregory, yeah. for me, Danders do it. It's m- harmless banter. No raising of tones, no capital locks. Just harmless yeah, banter. Everyone's that's just cool. how I do things. I'm a passionate person. So, 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 Gregory, <laughs> you're raising your voice. Gregory, use your indoor voice. Gregory, you're speaking in caps. Ah. You're speaking caps. Use your indoor voice, mate. My dog perked his ears up. He was like, "What's who do I bite? 
<laughs> See? But, yeah. dog's scared now. He's not scared. He's yeah. ready to go. <laughs> We can uh, we can have a chat about NRL games where you also get two hundred and fifty people per show. Oh, here we go. At least we don't boo on Anzac Day. Hey, hey, those are <laughs> fans. They do not count. No, but uh, I am like I'm king of Smug Mountain at the moment because my team are killing it. They're clear and on. And because you're writing a, a wave of retweets. Well, that too. I um. I don't take Twitter very seriously because it's like I don't really know how to use it and, like, there's no naked people on it. So it's like what's even the best. Oh, there's not there's a lot the right of naked people. people on Twitter. You're not following Actually, the right there's people. This one, there's this one guy I follow <laughs> and I don't know how I follow him. I think I unfollowed him because he likes a lot of GIFs of Asian cartoon porn. Hentai, is that what it's called? <laughs> Hentai, <laughs> like, yeah. Actually, uh, like, I don't know what it's called. Yeah. Um, and so my feed would just be like, I'd be like chilling on the train and be like, oh, look, here's some very graphic hentai. Okay. I'll, I will send uh, you all of the hentai memes, Danders. I have a source for these sorts of... of things. I'll just Danders, look up NXT spoilers and send them to you. <laughs> oh, wow. Danders, that That's hentai not nice. thing is kind of like what I did to my friend. He's a big metal fan, so I'll go, oh, one night I found, like, just being a dickhead, I go, Hey man, look at this brand new band shirt. And it was actually just a giant penis. So he didn't get it until six o'clock in the morning and he's looking on a crowded train. He goes, Oh, Chapo sent me yeah. a tweet. Boom. But the problem was his screen froze on that picture. <laughs> and he was on a crowded train standing up and people were looking around and they just see this massive penis on his phone. Fun. Look, to be fair, sometimes I do that to myself. Like <laughs> I'll be on a I'll be on a <laughs> I'll be on a crowded train and I'll, like, you know, open up my phone and uh, go to look in something in Google and the last thing I've looked up is a independent adult film um, <laughs> on, a streaming, on a streaming website. <laughs> and, uh, and I'll be like, oh, yeah, no, nothing like a good dose of Asian lesbians to start your morning. Nice, nice. Um, yeah. It's good to see that you're a fan of independent film. <laughs> I am all about supporting single mum. Do, do you do you pay for your porn, through. Danders? Do you pay for your porn? No, but no, you know what? Well, I then don't you don't support I independent pay. film, no. do you? I I don't skip the ads. <laughs> I watch the full ads. <laughs> wow. Do we want to talk about any more wrestling-related endeavours? Uh, yeah, um, I wanted to ask, um, how was the Lockie Hendricks-Robbie Eagles match? I find it very hard to judge because and I have the same problem with Will Ospreay matches because yeah. Robbie Eagles can carry a match. Um, mm-hmm. and it was it was like it was lots of fun, but I'm I'm not enough of a like a skilled, you know, wrestling um, journalist. I'm no Dave Meltzer. Um, so I don't know how to judge based on both performance abilities. It was an enjoyable match, and I think that's the okay. important thing. I am a little bit over the lover boy thing. I'm over his 30-minute monologues. Um, I'm over the whole thing. Like, he went to no effort to make it look like he was in New York. That was so half assed. I was so disappointed. <laughs> he made zero effort. Some and then people he was fell like, for I it. went to New- Chapo. Yeah. We know you felt we know you fell for it, Greg. I didn't um, even see it. Chapo told me about it. And I was like, This oh, is cool. a fabrication. This is fake news from you, Greg. Fake news. <laughs> um, I, have, just, I so- have the chats. I can go get screenshots if you need me to. <laughs> Alternative I facts. I thought it was disgust because I was like, I couldn't figure out my mic and I was yelling at you guys. I was like, it's fake, it's fake. (laughs) Um, Because like when he was doing the speech, it was like, so I went to New York and I got to see WrestleMania from the private corporate box. And then I went to Florida and met Uncle Paul. It's like, why didn't you meet Uncle Paul at WrestleMania? He was there. (laughs) Yeah, but he had a big match. yeah, but this he went backstage at some point. <laughs> and like, he would have gone this, backstage. This is, his, this is his nephew, Lockie, that we're looking at. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, look, it was a really enjoyable match. It was good to see Lockie 
going against better competitors because mm -hmm. he has been in very forgettable opening card matches. Yeah. This like, one, um, however, this – sorry. Sorry, I was going to say, like, I don't think his match with Fun Time Phil would have been the best. Yeah, game like, like and look, match. his match against his but his match against Jake Lindo a little while ago was was fun. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like he had a match against Mike Burr, which was okay. Um, this match, however, only happened because Slex had a family emergency, so he couldn't attend the show. Hopefully, um, he's okay yeah. with that and everything. Yeah, I think he he's going to be at the next PWA show. I think he was announced for. Yes, he is. Yeah. About Him and that. Mikey, squat, May squat, 10. squat. Yeah, May tenth. That May one 10th. is going for the tag yeah. title. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, that's going to be amazing. I wish I could get up for that one. But anyway, yeah, it was um, it was okay. I want to okay. see the Lover Boy thing going a new direction. I don't understand what the whole Game Changers thing is doing. I don't understand what his YouTube show is doing. I don't I don't understand any of it. Yeah. Well, you should see his post from today about the upcoming Kiss My Ass match. <laughs> yeah. It is it, interesting to say the least. No matter what he wins. Uh but no, I think that, yes. I think the Game Changers though is interesting. Like I want them to do more with that. I want I like I specifically want Matty Wahlberg down in MCW. Uh but yeah, I want to see him do more with that. But also, since we're talking about that MCW show, Danders, how did my boy Tommy Knight go? He was huge with the crowd. The crowd were very excited. Yeah. I fully, full disclosure, I didn't know a lot about him. Um, I kind of wish that it was just him and Dowie one on one. I wasn't a huge fan of the dinosaur guy. T Rex, yeah. Um, From over in yeah. New Zealand. Yeah. But yeah, Tommy Knight. It was a that was like a really fun match, and it was like a different dynamic to see um, Dowie in. Of course, he won because lol, Dowie wins. Yeah, Dowie wins. Um, well. Yeah, super but, Dowie. Yeah, was, yeah. he's he at least has more than five moves. To yeah. be fair, but but um, Tommy, yeah, no, he can. He, no, Dowie can wrestle, man. Dowie can go. But Tommy yeah. Knight, like, he's only been wrestling for like two, three years at most. Which yeah, and is there was lots of tweets of please bring, please bring Tommy back. We want more Tommy, please. Yeah, because he has a presence as well. Yeah, I, look, he doesn't photograph very well because when I saw him in photographs, I was like, oh, this is like, I don't know, this guy doesn't, I don't know who this is. And but so when he came out, he had he does have a big like a big presence and like, yeah. um, did he come out with know, a he's towel? Swagger. Yeah, he came out as Taz. Came yeah. out in his Taz cosplay. Um, <laughs> or Minoru but yeah, Suzuki. He does have a very, others, yeah. a very commanding presence. So, yeah, hopefully we see more of him. I'm glad you, you touched on that, that photo thing. He doesn't photograph well. Now, and I'm, I don't want to get heat here, but uh, I'm, I'm investing, hopefully, soon in a, in a camera and getting back. I used to do photography back when I was in the band and stuff. I used to do band photography and stuff. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm like... I feel like Adelaide could use some more wrestling photographers. Mm -hmm. So just, just when I, some artistic nudes as well. When I survey the scene, uh, I, no, why is everything going to come back to porn with you two? I only ask if you're taking artistic nudes. That's all. Nothing pornographic about it. I am. Greg. I am sure I will take some artistic nudes of of some people. Sure. Yes. But. The point I was getting at was I think Adelaide in general need uh, better wrestling photos. I don't think that's... And hockey photos. If you can get in touch with their hockey team, <laughs> because their hockey team is hot as fuck. They are all so hot. Like, the rest of the league is like, got nothing on the Adelaide Adrenaline. Their, their team is shit. Yeah. But all their players are so fucking fine. Yeah. See, my, <laughs> my partner worked at uh, the rec centre where the roller hockey guys all train and stuff and i'm sure there's some crossover and yeah she she loves yeah. it she loves hockey days let's put it that way yeah um <laughs> love of my life actually sorry this isn't this is another tangent but i feel like we're just shit talking anyway, <laughs> this is what we do so, um um so have i told you guys the story about my um my hall pass <laughs> no okay. I, I feel like i feel like we uh, should we should maybe save this for off the air this is this is where the the Patreon okay, dollars we'll really see. kick in. So let's let's give our socials and go home, and then you can okay. tell us this story. So where can people find you, Dander? 
Ali can find me with my saucy Paul Puff story on uh, patreon.com forward slash beef puffs. Um, <laughs> but uh, you can find me on Instagram at Rachel Danderfield, on Twitter, where I'm now famous, at Danderfield. And please, please don't add me on Facebook unless we've met or like I know you. Please don't add me on Facebook. And I am at Greg Unchained on Twitter, at Greg Unchained on Instagram. We collected the other B-plus wrestlers on Twitter. The B-plus wrestling everywhere else. Like, share, subscribe, five-star review if you like what we do. And thank you so much for listening.